The disco said there is, however, the need for a general overhaul in the financial status of the industry. We are supposed to have tackled this issue between 2013 and now because we have not addressed the real issue. The real issue is liquidity crisis. And the liquidity crisis means that for now in the industry, not just the discos, there is an excess of one trillion naira shortfall. If I'm buying a product for 68 naira and I'm being allowed to sell it for only 31 naira 50 kobo, and nobody is addressing the difference between 31 naira 50 kobo and 68 naira, and you're expecting me to buy your transformer to maintain your transformer, forget it. You're starting to supply with meters, forget it. It won't happen. It's better we say the truth and we all sit down and look at the problem than to keep on telling you it's coming, it's coming. It's not coming, no. It's not coming because recently the federal government did a very wonderful thing, which is helping to improve generation by addressing the 701 billion that they've done, that they have done to embed for generation. But we've told them that is like somebody has a big wound on his leg and you now take a small plaster, you go to the top of the wound, you put the plaster, you are the doctor. Put the plaster and say, go home, your wound is healed. It's not healed now. A big wound, you only address the top of it. When you address the uh, upstream of this sector, I don't come and do anything about the downstream. Forget you have not done anything. So instead of us playing politics or lying to ourselves, I come before you, Nigerian, to say, we, the discourse, we are prepared to say the truth because we are not a government by a startup. And we know we are the one that you people blame. You are the one that you beat up. You are, we are the one that you blame for everything. If I will let you know, what is going on is that we have a huge shortfall. The federal government to address that shortfall for those things that you mentioned to happen. Or else, it won't happen. While the overhauling is being planned, hopefully, there must be a strategy to work with what's available and the national need, which is in the range of 50,000 megawatts compared to 4,000, which is available, well, that is a, a large gap. But then comes the term load shedding. So whatever we get, we try to, you know, uh, to distribute equitably. That's the plan. But sometimes, when you say, okay, this side will be on probably eight hours now, then other side may not, you know, may be on load shedding. But by the time you want to now change, sometimes transmission, there may be problem on the grid. And you won't be able to, there will be no power in both you know, the, the one that I've been using and the one you wanted to change to. So this, this is one of the problems. Like I said, we can only distribute what we get from the grid. Sabotage of gas assets and pipelines, which has decommissioned uh, power plants and the ability to provide up to 3,000 megawatts of power out of commission because of the damage to the gas pipelines. The 3,500, 3,800 we have been able to keep on the grid over the last few months will be assisted greatly if we can have the gas pipelines back and add that 3,000 to it. That means that we will be able to deliver well over 6,000 megawatt if the gas pipelines are safe. But those, that sabotage has also created debt problems, liquidity, shortfalls in power expectation, and therefore shortfalls in uh, recovery because consumers are more resistant to payment when they don't have electricity. And I would be too, and you would be too. And we see that they pay more when the power is more stable. The generating companies say they are seeking ways to meet up with the demand. One of it is a combined cycle power plant. The combined cycle power plant is a higher technology that brings along with it better quality, cheaper cost ultimately, and better prices to everybody. It is easier for us to maintain a combined cycle power plant. It's easier for us to get feedstock for a combined cycle power plant. And ultimately, that simply means it's cheaper in terms of tariff to the customer 
ultimately. The quantum of gas that we use here today is about 394 million scoff of gas per day. Now, if it were to be a combined cycle power plant, we probably will require just about 250 million scoff per day. Invariably, we'll be using less gas to produce more power if we use newer technologies in generating electricity. That's where we're going ultimately, which is where and when we'll get to 2,670 megawatts I told you about earlier. With all these issues to tackle, there seem a need for more interaction between the discos and the consumers. We now have more and more customer uh, forums where we discuss these issues. In fact, in Echo Disco, we are my director. We just came up with a timetable where we're going to be visiting each of our districts and have town hall meetings with them. So that firsthand, we too come to understand the problems of the consumers and whatever we can do to deal with it. I agree entirely with you. Customer education is one of the key things. And um, uh, you must also understand uh, part of our dilemma. When we came in, we inherited a workforce that was not primarily ours. And most of them had been paid off. So many of them didn't have the incentive to keep working. So forcing old habits or replacing old habits with market-driven habits has been a challenge for many of us. And then introducing new blood to into an old system takes a little bit of, of uh, doing to get it right. So we're managing labor issues around the workforce and, and all whatnot. But we are, we're doing it steadily because we, don't, we can't afford the labor crisis because Anytime there's a crisis and people don't get power for one, two, three days, nobody wants to know because the inconvenience of not getting power, everybody is screaming and shouting. In answer to that need, distribution companies explain the recent blackout in some areas as a necessity. To expand, refurbish and maintain our distribution network. And I would rather plan it, tell you when that will happen, just like the movement of um, of the airport from Abuja to Kaduna, I'd rather tell you this is what we are trying to do. And when we are doing that maintenance, of course, light cannot be on. So we need to switch off lights in those areas in order to do those work that we need to do, some new installation, some refurbishment, some maintenance work, which will, at the end of the day, improve the supply situation of the areas affected. And the need for everyone's cooperation seems too glaring to miss. Um, as, as I, the, the, um, the, way, the, the way our economy can grow in leaps and bounds, especially in a recession like this, is to get power right. And if we all subscribe as a country to this notion, this correct notion, that power is the way out, of this acquired Maya, the more we can achieve better and quicker results. But if we have people who are resisting um, uh, changing old habits and raising more questions than finding solutions and all that, we will just be roaming around in a cage. Look, the government has announced that we want to build um, massive train rail lines, rail links between Lagos, Kano, Lagos, Ibadan, Kano, Kaduna, and where do you think all these things will rest on? Isn't it power? It's on power. So the government is in a hurry to industrialize. The government is in a hurry to create the enabling environment for business. But the very fulcrum upon, what all, upon which all these things rest is power. The minister has promised that the new approach will have the council find ways to simplify and reduce the cash deficits that have accumulated as a result of previous reduced tariffs over the years. This, we hope, will deal with the worries of the discos and consequently, Nigeria will enjoy steady power supply. Well, that's it for this episode of Big Story. I'm Amy Thompson. Let's meet on our social media platforms.